Hey guys, so recently I built a bed and a standalone sink structure for Teresa for her um, her van that she lives in. And I didn't have a lot of time to build it or anything like that. I didn't have a lot of time to plan it out. And ever since then, I've always been thinking of ways I could have done it better. Um, but today I actually have an idea of making a, a standalone sink unit. And I think I can make it better. And if it turns out well and it's something she likes, I could swap out this one for her old one. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit fancier. Uh, it won't be as easy to, you know, take out the sink and dump out, but uh, I think it'll be a, a nicer standalone unit. So let's give it a shot. Ah. All right, guys, remember all this wood that I got for $23? Uh, I had nowhere to store it, so I actually stored it all underneath my element in the garage. So you can see most of the wood is just sitting underneath the car, and I need to get rid of some of it. Some of the bigger pieces are on the side like that. But we're going to use that wood that I got, the pallet of wood that I got for $23. Okay, in addition to that, I'm going to use this sink right here I got. It's 18 by 18 by 10 inches. And it's a Torva sink. So let's take a look at the sink. Okay, so it comes with a template, which is going to be nice. But check out this sink. So it comes with its own hose for the RV, which is really, really nice. All right. Comes with own drain with a cap and a strainer. The mounting hardware. General directions. But let's look at the sink. All right, so there's the sink. This is real. Look at the with thickness. It's really thick stainless steel, and it comes with a cutting board that fits right on top of it. So this is going to be perfect. I'll leave a link in the description for this this sink if anyone's interested in which sink I used. That's going to go on top and. I'm going to build the cabinet around this sink size. So let's give that a shot. All right, so here's the mock-up of what I wanted to do. I wanted to have this cabinet hold all these things. One, at the bottom, I wanted the grill to sit, uh, and there'd be two jugs. And I haven't decided which one of these two types of jugs to use, but one would be for clean water and one would be for the dirty water. And here would be the sink on top of it. So you could see it's very compact. Um, in the middle will be the, the drain. So that way it'll fit in between the two jugs and it'll save a lot of space by doing it like that. So um, I'm gonna basically make it this height and start building the walls around it. It's a lot more work, but it's uh, a little cleaner look. So I'm gonna use um, pocket holes so that no screws are being exposed. They're just on the inside. All right, so now I have clean hole and I'll be able to drill into the sides of the boards and it'll be nice and clean okay so now I got four holes so if you ever never use one of these uh, jigs for these pocket holes they actually work really great I'll leave a link in the description if you need one of these too
Okay, so for this next level, what I want to do is make sure that I have room to store my grill and my burner. That's about right. So I'm going to mark the height and then drill this in just like I did that one. All right, that's the way it looks. It's good. This should fit underneath. Slides in and out pretty easily. Perfect. Okay, so next up I'm going to, to do this top support. I'm going to use these brackets again to hold it in place. And I already made pocket holes, so I'm going to screw these things in. And I wanted to make this deep enough so that it covers up the sink. So it's also a it's support, but it's also a facade to hide the sink basin. Okay, so I need a backside support too. And because this is the backside and I'm not covering up the sink basin or anything like that, I'm using a smaller piece of wood just because this is already getting pretty heavy. Next up is the lower uh, back support, and this is also a stopper so that uh, the water bottles and the jugs and things like that won't slide out or topple over or anything like that. So this will hold everything in place. Now we need to make the top counter, and I'm going to use this piece of wood. I'm trying to keep it as small as possible, and then I'm going to cut the middle. Okay, so I got the top cut out. That's going to go like that. And now I'm going to use the template that they gave me, and then I'm going to draw the perimeter. Okay, so I'm going to cut that hole out of the top. All right, so this would go like that. And I'm going to put some pocket holes there to mount this top up, and then we'll get the sink in. All right. Looks good. So before I mount the sink, I'm going to sand down the edges. Oh, poo. I did a boo-boo again. I cut too much right here. I wanted to have that part right there uh, so that... I could uh, mount the faucet to this, you know, but I'll, I'll figure something out after afterwards. Right now, let's just mount the sink up. All right, so it, the, the sink comes with these mounting brackets, and I'll start using them. I don't think I could mount, I don't think I could uh, mount all four sides, but I'll do what I can. All right, so I got the mounts on. It wasn't pretty, but there's not a lot of room for them. That's the way they look. A little bent up, but uh, I got them in somehow. All right, so let's get in the hardware. All right, next up, we're going to mount down the hardware. Okay, so looks like what you do is you take this part right here with this um, plastic, put it on the bottom. And this guy goes on top with the gasket right there. Guy goes on the bottom and you take this guy and you screw it in.
hold it in place, I guess. Screw in the bottom. All right. Looks pretty good. Oh, that comes off. And you use this tool that they give you to hold it while you're screwing it. <laughs> you're not supposed to hold it with this. Okay. So now that goes there. If you want a lid, that goes there. Pretty good. Strainer. That's the way it looks like from the bottom. So let's uh, install the hose. All right, so here's the hose. Looks like you put in the gasket right there. Pretty easy. All right. Cool, now we have drainage. All right, so for the faucet, I'm going real easy with this USB pump. I did this many years ago and it's actually worked out great. No issues. And I have a bulkhead right here. And I'll leave a link in all this stuff, the sink, the faucet, and all the hardware, if you're interested. Um, this is just a basic bulkhead. And I'm going to use this as my mount, so to speak, for that. Okay. And hopefully this works. <laughs> this will just go in there like that all right so it's not ideal because it's a little high so what I need to do is I need to put a little spacer so that this sits a little bit lower and then this uh, this nut I would like it to be a little bit bigger so I'm gonna see if I can bulk that up a little bit so it wedges in here with this guy all right, so because it's a little bit too high, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it with a pipe cutter. Oh, it's cracking. Got to be careful. All right, we get it. I'm going to use a saw. <laughs> Not my straightest cut. <laughs> Okay, so now this should fit in without hitting the bottom. All right, yeah, that looks good, but now you can see it's a little loose. So I need to um, do, uh, I got this just to try to fill up the, the gap a little bit, and then that should fit in there. But now this part is too big, so I need to cut that. All right, that should give me what I need. Okay, if I put that in there, hopefully now everything will fit. Please. There we go. So that's a more snug fit. All right, so I just did a little MacGyver rig. I put in some duct tape just to make the diameter a little bit bigger. I put some rubber band around here so that, that fits a little bit more secure. I put some duct tape around that too. I'm twisting it just to give it a little bit more girth. Kind of like what you used to do. I used to do with hockey sticks for the grip. Not the most elegant solution. Oops. Keep pushing that but it's gonna fit in nicely. All right, so now for the water, remember I measured it up 
to these size water containers and you could just you know you could put a few of these in and it'll still fit um, so you could just use whatever size water container you want and it'll fit a few and for the drainage I'm using this old bucket that I have here and the reason why I'm not using a water container is because you know it's just if I use the container the it'll be a little bit harder for the water to flow out so i want it something lower so if i use this guy i'm going to drill a hole in top of him and stick this in and it should drain fine give it a shot Give that a shot. Perfect. Let's see. Let it go something like that. And this hose is a little long, but I'm a little reluctant to cut the hose just, just in case I might want to do something different in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shove it in a little bit extra. There we go. Let's fill this up with water. Okay. Stick that in there. Nice and neat. Take off that drain plug. Great water flow. Oh, okay, and of course, there's water in there. Perfect. All right, so now I need to make a little barrier right here so that you know the water jugs don't slide out and stuff like that. I could make a cabinet, but if you've built cabinets inside campers before, you, you'll know that when you open the door, there's just not a whole lot of room. Um, so either one, I'd have to make two swinging doors just to make the door smaller so that it's easier to get to. But what's even easier is if I just make a little barrier right here, then nothing could um, slide out or anything like that. It's just not a clean as clean a look because it's going to be some things are going to be exposed. But for campers, it's really convenient to uh, mini campers, that is, uh, to not have to open a cabinet door or anything like that. So I'm going to build a barrier right there. All right, there's the barrier. Now, nothing's going to slide out of that. You could shove a whole lot of other stuff in here too, I guess. All right, one last thing. Remember, I made this slot right here for my grill. So it slides under there. Or I'm thinking I'll probably just slide it under sideways like that to save a little bit of room but i wanted to make a fold out table right here so that i could also cook if we want to make this a you know a full cooking station all right so what i'm going to use is i'm going to use these foldable table hinges and it's going to lock into place and it's going to fold down so it's nice and compact One last step, let's cover it with some true oil for extra waterproofing. This uh, material right here is a little water resistant already. Can't, hard to tell, but it's, a, it's cabinet uh, grade wood. So there's already a, a coating on it. I don't even know what that coating is made out of, but it's something. <laughs> so let's get some true oil on it. I did one last thing, or two last things. I put this bar on and a backstop so that uh, my 
drill won't slide around it and it will stop. All right, looks like the true oil is dry and it's time to demo out the system. You can see I have a sink, standalone unit. I have this extension table that I could cook on. It'll go in and out like that. Let's look at the sink. And this sink is awesome. It's got a cover I could use. I have my pump. And it gives you plenty of water. Wash your hands, whatever you need to do. There's also a timer on this, so if you push the 600 milliliter button, it'll just put out 600 milliliters and stop. Let's look down. All right, underneath, you could see there's room for quite a few water bottles and things like that of different sizes. Let's see if I, you could actually even put three of these type right there. You could squeeze in three. But, uh, you know, you could use any type of water bottles. Here's the gray water the hose that comes down into there for the gray water of course you could just remove it all one by one down low I have my butane grill that you could take out and put it up here flip that around and you have a nice cooking uh, station right there also there is room for two butane bottles if you need some more you can take a look at the back and let's cover this up all right so this sink comes with this nice cutting board too so when the station is in cook mode that's the way it looks looks great you could um, even just kind of go like that to cut things and still have access to your sink this will pivot. This is a, a USB faucet. Um, you could recharge it so it's cordless right now. I'll, again, I'll leave a link in the description for all these things if you're interested in the, the, these hinges. Let's store it away. All right, and when you want to store it away, just put it in. Everything will store away nicely. These hinges just come down like that. And now you're in the closed position. So I, I got a little bit more time to think and design and, and build um, this standalone sink unit. I was kind of rushed to do Teresa's um, sink. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. and I didn't have a lot of time to build for sure. Uh, but if she's interested in this one, she could have this one.